good evening everybody thank you for joining sunil here uh, can you hear me please give your confirmations on the chat box praveen thank you taksande thank you all thank you all for joining the session i hope you are enjoying the devops course thank you very much for your uh, interest thank you very much let's stop the chat so that we can focus on the training thank you very much let's stop the chat what is our plan for today the prerequisite for devops is linux you know that the prerequisite for devops is linux so we have to be comfortable in the frequently used options in the linux command so this is our plan for today we'll be starting with basic operations like how to create a file how to remove a particular file how to deal with directories how to create directories how to remove the directory how can we navigate between one directory to other directories how can we create this kind of nested hierarchical structure difference between rm dir and rm hyphen r long list very important what happens when a file name starts with dot in linux how to see hidden files how to create a hidden directory combination of listing options and how can we copy a file this is a frequently used options of linux so today's session we are making ourselves hands free with respect to the basic activities of a linux operating system so this is our plan for today this is our plan for today i i hope uh, you are all part of whatsapp group i already have posted the whatsapp group in the chat box if you are not part of whatsapp group please join the whatsapp group in the using the chat box uh, link which i have provided in the chat box okay <clears throat> i'm doing it one more time so before getting into the concepts let's have an interaction with some of the participants starting with michael how are you michael i'm i'm doing good sir yeah. doing well i think it's good morning for you you are from which location i'm um, in canada yes your yes, question uh, please uh i just want to ask <coughs> sorry my question is when uh when is this um this devops class going to end and when is the other one going to start like the aws because i missed the other one devops is just started today is day 3 isn't it the duration of the devops course is 45 days okay so it will month it will this is january 20 so february ending so it will go through till february month michael about devops okay okay, okay. Yeah. so uh the devops that we're going to do here is it like is it like going to qualify or that we can go look for a job or yes just the this is job oriented training so once you complete this course you will be in a position to uh, attend the devops interviews okay okay thank you and call, coming to the new aws course will be starting in february first week okay okay so how long is it going to is it going to be the aws course is 25 days okay so that one also suffice us to look for a job like a yes you are right everything everything is practical and job oriented okay thank you thank you michael welcome deepak kumar your question deepak <clears throat> deepak you are now allowed to unmute and talk anita ghate hi anita. sunil yes, yes anita. sir yes sir good evening sunil. hello sunil ankita yes please proceed yeah good evening sunil sunil uh, yesterday i was trying with another uh, terminals like uh, powershell and the command prompt but that ssh and ch mode command is not working with that terminal but i was trying with git bash it's working fine okay. so what's that issue no for other terminals you need to convert the pem file to ppk file there is a different approaches okay so we okay. have used it terminal does not make any difference ankita ankita as long as you are successfully connecting generally powershell is used for windows machines also okay yeah, but okay. please use git bash okay that's not okay a okay so thank there are you a lot of terminals available here thank you thank you so much Raushan Kumar. Uh, uh, hi, Sunil. Raushan here. Yeah? Yes, Raushan. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, actually, like uh, I was with a part of uh, some previous batch also, uh, but uh, uh, due to some uh, issue with my job, uh, like uh, I have to suddenly switch it, so I left that batch. Uh, uh, and you're talking uh, again, about the previous DevOps batch. 
no previous to previous batch previous okay, to that's previous. All. yeah you can repeat here that's not a problem okay okay so like uh, i have successfully now switched to uh, some other company but i, I want Very to good. skilled uh, my upgrade your uh, skills yeah yeah I, I want to upgrade my skill I, i'm working in uh, production support uh, sunil like uh, i'm having around 4 year of experience in production support Very so good as like it, it, it will be good for this me this is to... a right technology roshan okay so you uh, are you learning aws also uh, like uh, as i said like i, I was in a mid of job change uh, okay uh, so to... please please complete aws course you have to complete both the skill sets roshan you have to complete aws you have to complete devops okay so okay, that so you so can when, when the next batch will start next as month, i have right? mentioned the aws batch will start in february okay sure thanks okay. thank you roshan thank you How are you, Nagul Mira? You are now allowed to unmute and talk. Hey, can you hear me, Sunil? Hi, Sunil. I can hear you. Good evening. Yes, How are you, you, Sunil? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. Yes, your question. Yes. Uh, see, actually, in the DevOps part, uh, yesterday only started. No, I don't yes. have any questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, in the AWS, I had a one small question <coughs> today morning session. Can I ask now? If it is. you permit me today is vpc concept okay general this is devops so please ask questions questions towards devops please ask me nagul okay this is, this See, is devops in the course. devops no it's just a small question yes tell me you, tell me no in the morning vpc we are creating the nacl in the like uh, uh, we are given the some kind of uh, uh, security at the subnet the level security right subnet level right you are right. nacl in the nacl part yes you are right so, so whenever uh, you are saying that lowest priority is the highest security lowest one, rule number is having the highest yes, priority lowest rule no yes. so the uh, everybody remaining <laughs> members i'm say sorry okay just uh, wait no for a few minutes okay, okay yeah tell me tell me yeah in the in the previous rule uh, one hacker is continuously hacking the our uh, web server so we are blocking them okay. and you are saying that we are yes, giving the Uh, another IP kind address. of rule, yes, rule. Another well, yes. like two uh, hundred is we are blocking one ninety nine also is one other hacker also is hacking continuously. Okay. So then, as per your statement, the lowest uh, priority is the highest security. Yeah. Then the second thing is automatically allowed. It is also no, no. Blocking. When compared to two hundred, both are lower, right? <coughs> you need to compare with the protocol point of view, SSH. Okay, okay. In SSH, there are three rules: two hundred, one ninety nine, one ninety eight. Yes. Okay. So out of this two hundred, one ninety nine, one ninety eight is considered when then both are blocked and two hundred is uh, allowed. Okay, so that's how it happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I understand. understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Nev. Thank yes. you. <clears throat> one more final call. One more final call before getting into today's concepts. Okay. This time again with the international participant, so Lefak. Hello, Sunny. How are you? Great, great. Thank you so much. Are you happy? Very, very happy, man. Happy. Thank you. <laughs> How is uh, the learning? Oh, great, great, great. So far, I'm coming just to refresh. You know, uh, I was in Bash eighty. I remember so, you. Yeah. So Thank you. I got everything well situated and perfect. Yeah, so I'm just coming here to refresh. Yes, good. Any specific question? Uh, no specific question. Any? Uh, I mean, I, I know, I know already the plan, but are there any updates on the curriculum now? Yes, the new thing that's updated is the interesting thing, that's Terraform. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Terraform wow. is updated in this batch. Okay, the much awaiting tool. I wow. hope you will enjoy. Yes. It. Yes, that's of course. You remember, we used to ask it a lot. We used to ask a lot. So there's a lot of pressure. Is, there's a lot of pressure on me to provide Terraform training. Absolutely. So that sir. made me to learn. Okay. And so my question is: will, Am I supposed to pay again for? No. I already. I mean, I mean, pay for the material. No, right. no, no. You, oh. you don't need to okay. pay in DevOps. You can pay once, and you can listen multiple times. 
okay the many people who wants to revise but you will not get the recordings because you are from the old batch you get the recordings of the old batch you will not get the recorded sessions of this particular batch because you are from the old participants but you are attend you are allowed to attend the live training okay so i, I, should, I should pay enough. to have them i should pay to have them uh, uh, if you uh, want one more set of recordings of this batch you have to pay one more time yeah yeah because i, I need i need the terraform i need the terraform so okay, bad no problem okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much sir. thank you so much sir. thank you and your Absolutely. feedback on the training Absolutely, sir. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> That's it. Let's go on. If you want to show you all these Linux commands, my dear friends, please try to understand how many are eagerly waiting for this particular course. My dear friends, this is a game changer for your industry, from, for your uh, IT industry, for your career. Okay, so this course is a game changer. There are many people who have successfully migrated from legacy technologies, existing technologies like mainframes, testing. They have successfully moved, successfully after learning AWS and acquiring the DevOps skills, successfully migrated to cloud platform. I want success story from this batch also. There are many people who are from non-technical background, like lecturers and then uh, civil engineering, mechanical engineering. Uh, digital marketing guys are also successfully migrated to cloud and web developer, website designers, even they have migrated to cloud. So everything is possible. Stay focused, stay focused. And uh, from my side, I promise whatever I deliver will be the best of the training. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's move on. So the prerequisite, every session is important. Every session is important. By looking at this agenda, you think that is very simple, but it's, a, it's always a good revision. You may know all these concepts, but the more and more we get into deeper concepts of Linux and the, the moment we start Git, it becomes much, much more interesting. So let's get into the Linux concepts. So if you want to do Linux commands, you have to have a Linux environment. We already have created a Linux EC2 machine on AWS in yesterday's session. So let's move on <clears throat> to my AWS cloud. Let's log in. logged into AWS cloud platform. So we have created an EC2 mission. I hope you remember in the services yesterday, we have selected a service called EC2. EC2 is all about creating virtual machines on AWS cloud. So this is the mission. I hope you remember the name of the mission I have provided is my mission one. This is a Linux Ubuntu mission. It's always good practice to stop and you're no more using it. So I want to use it again. I want to use the mission which I created yesterday. Instant state, let's start the mission. What is a terminal? We are not using putty here. We are using a new terminal called git bash. I hope you remember yesterday we have installed the terminal git bash in our personal laptop. Let's wait for the machine to get, get to get into running state. <clears throat> the machine is in running state, you can see. Let's connect. Look at this, there's a small glitches here. It still shows as stopped. Select the machine, click on connect. You will take the entire SSH command. And where do you run this SSH command? You have to run this particular complete SSH command, the entire SSH command. You have to run it in the terminal. The terminal is git bash. So I will be the op I will be opening the terminal, and the terminal should point out to the location where the PEM file is saved. The PEM file of this particular EC2 mission, quick revision. You have to do hands-on, my dear friends. The PEM file is saved in the folder called DevOps batch 84. And this is the location where the PEM file is saved. I remember in this location, in this location, I open the terminal. Remember your terminal to point out to the location of the folder where the PEM file is available. I confirm, yes, the PEM file is available. Now I use the SSH command. And this SSH command will help me in successfully connecting to the Linux machine, which is somewhere running in Mumbai. And the moment you're getting an IP address, the moment you're getting an IP address, that's a proof that you're connected. Yes, we have created a Linux machine in the last session. And today we have connected to that Linux machine using the terminal called Good Bash. And let's move on quickly. Let's wrap up all these concepts of learning how to create a file. Let's move on. Everything is very simple. I want to create a file. Let's name, let's name the file as F1. I want to create a file. And the name of the file which I want to do is to uh, the name of the file is F1. So how can we create a file? 
the name of the file which I want to create is F1. How can we create a file in Linux? My dear friends, try to understand. In Linux, we can create a file by using the command called cat. In Linux, we can create a file by using the command called cat. Cat command is used for creating a file. I want to create a file with the name file F1. How can I do that? The syntax is cat. The command, use a greater than symbol, mention the file name which you want to create, F1. This helps you to create a file. This helps you to create a file. When you're creating a file, why do we create a file? You want to enter some data in the file. You want to save some data in the file. Am I right? I'm a little fast because these are very simple concepts. So I'm a little bit fast. So I want to create a file. So I want to create a file by using the cat command. Yes, let's go ahead and create a file. <clears throat> Mention the file one. So this is how I'm you to create a file. The file gets created. The control will enter into the file. You are not getting the IP address. Remember, the moment I press enter, you are not getting the prompt back. You're not getting the dollar prompt. Right now you're pointing inside the file. And you, I want to write some contents like good evening. Welcome to DevOps. Thank you. This is the three lines of content. I want to write it in the file F1 and how to come out of the cat command. Control D, press Control D to come out of the cat command back to your dollar prompt. Control D to come out of the cat command. You have to use Control D. This is the command to come out of the cat command. I'm done with creating the file. What is the name of the file I have created? F1 is the name of the file I have created. Can I create one more file? Yes, I want to create one more file. Cat, I want to create a file with the name F2. Yes, create a file and my control will enter into the file. Write some data, whichever you want to create. So write some data, whichever you want to create. So, and then how to come out of the cat command. Control D is the command to come out of the file cat command. So this is how we can create files. How many files we have created? Two files we have created, F1 and F2. How to see list of all the files? We have a command ls stands for list. <clears throat> we have a command ls. We'll show you list of all the files which we have created. How many files we have created? Two files as expected. You can see the result listing out. Uh, ls will show you list of all the files which you have created. As expected, you have created two files, F1 and F2. We are done with creating the file. Now you know clear is a command. Clear is a command which helps you to clear the screen. Now you know how to create a file. We can create a file in Linux by using the cat command. You're not only just creating the file. <coughs> you Now you know how to list the files which you have created. Next, I want to see the content in the file. I want to read the content in the file. I know the file F1 is having some three lines of content like good evening, welcome to DevOps. I want to see that content. I want to read the content. Whenever you want to read the content, just use cat followed with the file name. When you use greater than, it helps greater than symbol is used when you're creating a new file. I don't want to create a new file. I want to read the information present in the file. We have a cat command, which will print you the information present in the file. Similarly, you want to read the information present in the second file. So cat command, when you don't use greater than symbol, it will just help you to print the content present in the file. So you now know how to create a file. You now know how to see list of all the files which you have created. You are in a position to read the contents present in the file. So we are done with creating a file. Let's learn how can we remove a file. We, how can we remove a file? We have a command RM stands for remove as expected. We have a command RM which helps you to remove a file. I want to remove my first file. Let's say I want to remove my second file. Mention the file name which you want to remove. That helps you to remove a file. Let's do it. I have, we have two files. You know it, we have file F1, we have a file F2. I want to remove the second file. RM followed the file name, which you want to remove. That helps you to remove the file successfully removed. So we are getting the prompt back. So now list out the files. You have only have one file. The second file has been removed. Now you are in a position to create the file. You are in a position to read the information present in the file and you are in a position to remove the file. So you now know how to create a file in Linux. Vinay Missile. Yes, Minay, your question. You are now allowed to unmute Vinay. <clears throat> if you're not having any questions, please do not raise your hand. Kumar Ravel. Kumar Ravel. No questions. 
ईश्वरी चरण कैन यू हियर मी हेलो हेलो चरण गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू या आई एम डूइंग वेल आज सुनील माय क्वेश्चन इज I'm 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 from uh, IT industry only. I have uh, automation testing knowledge using automation Selenium. Automation testing, Selenium platform. Yes, I have knowledge in I'm little bit knowledge in Java as well. Very good. So I'm planning to switch to uh, cloud. I mean cloud. I mean that is. Uh, so my question is, uh, I'm he- I heard from my, one of my friends about your uh, sessions. Mm-hmm. It is got this. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is DevOps? What is AWS? How we correlate them and uh, Uh, I just want to have some. Uh, I mean, have you attended my day one? I miss that. Okay, so please watch my session one recording. Okay. I've explained what is DevOps. Okay. Okay. DevOps is some set of tools which helps in implementing automation okay. in software development cycle. Okay. okay. And this DevOps tools we can implement on AWS. You can implement on Azure. You can implement on GCP. Okay. okay okay aws gcp azure these are cloud platforms and devops are the tools which will be implemented on the cloud platforms okay 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 Ishwari, look so, at our video so that you will have more in detail information and one more thing so as you say february is a date confirmed when that aws is going to start no the date is not yet confirmed you will get the updates in the whatsapp group okay thank you thanks sunil thank you charan thank you charan <clears throat> yes vinay misal yeah uh, can you hear me now i can hear you it's very clear vinay how are you doing Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Doing well. You're from which location? I am from Mysore, from Karnataka. Okay. Good. Yeah, I am. I am working. I think one as... of the most cleanest city of India. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Of Is course. it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I happened to visit Mysore uh, three uh, three years back. I think. Oh, is it yes. okay? Yes. yes. This is a very beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, my question is, uh, I am, I am, uh, I'm working as a data production engineer. It's a uh, Uh, like i am working as a tsm administrator and also a vm administrator oh and, so uh, you are in uh, on premises yeah, industry yes yeah, on premises industry mm-hmm. and uh, is it a right technology that i can very much very yeah. much when you are in the right technology you are already in the related technology on premises okay when okay. so yeah. you know aws AWS no I have not attended any classes but uh, how do you uh, happen to know this training in such uh, it, uh, one of my friend is is in the uh, uh, a uh, class now he is mr mm-hmm. vinay kn he okay. suggest me to join here okay so uh, i recommend right. to learn uh, anyways it's good you are learning devops i recommend you to learn aws also vinay okay yeah 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 so once you acquire both the skills you can uh, uh, leverage your skill uh, your leverage your profile to cloud cloud engineer yeah. which is much more latest in the market okay okay uh, most of our company is moving to azure that's why i'm uh, okay. I, i thought uh, Uh, if the aws and uh, azure are both are very similar if you learn one cloud yeah. platform you can run the second one very easily hmm? yeah okay thank you for your classes sir thank you vinay yeah <clears throat> neeraj pal your question neeraj <clears throat> no questions please do not raise your hand <clears throat> let's move on let's deal with directories we have learned how to create file how to remove a file let's go ahead and create directories let's go ahead and create directories okay before showing you how to create a directory there's one more thing i want to explain about files how can we create file in linux how can we create file in linux your question sunil we already have learned how to create a file we can create file in linux by using cat followed with the greater than symbol and mention the file name this is one way of creating a file in linux there's another way there's one more way of creating file in linux you can also create file in linux by using touch command you are right cat is also a command which helps in creating a file you can also create file using touch command let's i want to create a file with the name f3 i want to create a file with the name uh, f3 so you can do that by using touch command touch followed with f3 that's it the file gets created let's experience it touch f3 the file gets created that's it ls yes you can see the file has been created i want to create one more file f4 
file has been created. Yes, the file has been created. Have you observed the difference of creating the file by using the cat command than by using by touch command? Yes, there is a difference. When you create a file by using the cat command, what happens? The file gets created. Control will enter into the file. Agree? Control will enter into the file. You are writing some contents like good evening, welcome to DevOps. You are writing some contents and you are pressing control D to come out of the cat command. So that's the way of cat command creating the file. When you create a file, you will immediately write some contents. In such case, we use cat command. Whereas touch command will help you to create the file and these files are empty files. Whenever you want to create an empty file and later sometime later you want to edit some contents or write some contents in the file. First, you want to create a particular file. You can do that by using touch command. So touch command, the purpose is to create an empty file, zero bytes. Just a file gets created, it's zero bytes. So if anybody asks you, how can we create files in Linux? There are two approaches. One is cat command, which helps you to create a file. The other one is by using touch command. Touch command will help you to create a file and th those files are empty files, fine. Let's deal with directories. Let's deal with directories. How can I create a directory? I want to create a directory with the name D1. This is the name of the directory which I'm creating. If you compare in Windows operating system, it is called as a folder. In Windows, we create folders, right? Inside the folders, we can place some files, something similar to it. In Linux, it is called as a directory. I want to create a directory. What is the command which helps you to create a directory? It's very simple. MKDIR stands for make directory. MKDIR is a command which helps you to create a directory. What is the name of the directory you want to create? D1 is the name of the directory which I want to create. So this command helps you to create a directory. Let's proceed and create a directory. MKDIR, mention the directory name which you want to create. D1, that helps you to create a directory. Directory is created. Can we confirm? Can we see list? Yes, LS will show you not only files. Please don't think that LS will show you only the files. It will also show you the directories also. Clear? I want to create one more directory, mkdir. I want to create a directory with the name d2. Yes, it has been created. LS to show you a list of all the files as well as directories. You now know how to create a directory. Next point. <clears throat> how to identify which one is a file and which one is a directory? How can we identify which one is a file and which one is a directory? As of now, one way of identification is color. The directories are shown in blue color, as you can see, and the files are shown in white color in this terminal. The colors changes from terminal to terminal. So as of now, one way to identify which one is a file and which one is a directory is by color. There's other way to identify which one is a file and which one is a directory. I'll show it soon. I've shown how to create a directory. Okay, done. Next, PWD, print working directory. We have a command PWD, print working directory. We'll show you the current path from which you are working. You're creating some files. You're creating some directories. What is your current path in which you are working? You're pointing to which path in Linux? PWD will show you the current path. Currently you're working, you are pointing in slash home slash Ubuntu. This is your current location. PWD stands for print working directory. will show you the current path in which you are working. Right now you're working in slash home slash Ubuntu. So all you are right now you're working in slash home slash Ubuntu. This means all this directory D1 is under Ubuntu. Second directory is also present inside the Ubuntu. These files F1, F2, F3 are inside the Ubuntu. So PWD, print working directory, <clears throat> will show you the current path in which you're working. And in this parent under slash home slash Ubuntu, under slash home under Ubuntu, we have created two directories and we have created three files. Am I right? Yes. What is D1? My dear friends, what is D1? Nothing special, it's a directory. What is D2? D2 is also a directory. Can we place files inside the directory? No doubt in Windows, we create files inside the folders, right? Similarly, we can also create files inside the directory. I want to create some files inside the directory. I want to place some files inside the directory. Which directory? We are having two directories, D1 and D2. I want to create some files inside D2. Can we do that? Yes, you can do that. You can create files. You can create files inside the directory. I want to create file inside the directory D2. Okay, how can you do that? First, you need to enter into the directory. 
first you need to enter into the directory right now you're not pointing inside the d2 directory you're pointing in slash home slash ubuntu under ubuntu you have a directory d2 so you have to enter into the directory we have a command cd change directory and you need to point out which directory you want to change to you want to change to d2 right now you're not pointing to d2 you're pointing in slash home slash ubuntu you have to point to d2 because you want to create files inside d2 am i right so change to that D2, CD stands for change directory and mention the directory name which you want to change. Yes, now I have successfully changed it to D2. If you want to confirm whether you have successfully changed it to D2 or not, PWD stands for print working directory. Previously, you are pointing to slash home slash Ubuntu. Now you are pointing to slash home slash Ubuntu. Under Ubuntu, you are inside the D2 directory. Now, if you create some files here, those files will be present inside the directory D2. Very simple and obvious. So you know how to create a directory, not only just creating a directory. Now you are in a position to enter into the directory which you have created by using the command called CD. <coughs> now you are pointing to CD. You are pointing to D2 directory. Inside the data, I want to create a file. Okay, you can create a file by using cat command. You can create a file by using touch command. To simple to be simple, I want to create a file with the name touch command. I want to create a file with the name F5. The file gets created. LS will show you list of all the files present in the D2 directory. Lilith will show you a list of all the files present in this particular D2 directory. There's only one file present in the D2 directory. Yes. Clear. I'm a clear, not only just creating the file. Now you know how to enter into, uh, not only just creating a directory, you are in a position to enter into the directory and you have, you have created some files inside there. Where is the current location you're pointing to? PWD is a command which helps you to know the current location using which you are pointing to. You're pointing to slash home slash one two. Got it? Perfect. Look at this. <clears throat> D2 is a directory. Yes, you know it. We have created it. D2 is a directory. And this directory is present under Ubuntu directory. Ubuntu is also a directory. OK, so for D2, the parent is Ubuntu. <clears throat> for D2, the parent is Ubuntu because D2 is under the Ubuntu directory. For Ubuntu, the parent is home. For home, the parent is slash. Slash is the topmost directory hierarchy. Root <coughs> It's called a slash. OK, this is the hierarchy structure. So you are inside home slash home slash Ubuntu. Right now you are inside the D2. You want to, for D2, the parent is Ubuntu. You want to go back to its parent directory. You want to go back to immediate parent directory. You want to go back to slash home slash Ubuntu. For D2, the parent is Ubuntu. You want to go back to that particular Ubuntu. Whenever you want to go back to immediate parent directory, immediate parent directory, CD double dot. You're right. CD double dot, which helps you to go to immediate parent directory. For D2, the parent directory is Ubuntu. Yes. Now I'm back to slash home slash Ubuntu. If you want, you can confirm it. Right now I'm back to app slash home slash Ubuntu. Okay. Like this, you can go to the next directory or you can also go back to its previous directory slash home slash Ubuntu. And here, unless you can see the files and directories which are created, we have created directory D2 and you have entered into the D2. Inside the D2, we have created a file called as F file. These are the directories which you have created and these are the files which we have created. Clear? You are in a position to navigate between the files and directories. Clear about this? Yes. So let's go back to our agenda. You know how to create a directory. Let's learn how can we delete a directory. How can we delete a directory? How many directories we are having? Two directories we are having D1, the other one is D2. How can we remove the directory? Deleting or removing both are the same. MKDIR, which helps you to create a directory. RMDIR, which helps you to remove a directory. Got it? RMDIR, which helps you to remove a directory. I want to remove my first directory D1. Yes, you can do that. Okay, so RMDIR, which helps as a command, which helps you to remove a directory. I want to remove my first directory. RMDIR followed with D1. Yes, your directory has been removed. Yes, yes. right now there's no more D1. It has been removed. Clear? Clear how to remove a directory. Similarly, can I remove my D2 also? Same. No, why not? We can try to remove D2 also. RMDIR followed with remove the second, try to remove the second directory. But this command fails. As expected, this command fails. Unable to remove D2 because it is not empty. You got the message also. <clears throat> you got the error message also. 
it is not empty. So this means RMDIR helps you to remove a directory only when it is empty. D1 directory is empty, I know it. So that's why it is successfully removed. But D2 is not empty because inside the D2, you have created a folder F5, do you remember? Yes, it's not empty. So RMDIR can work only for empty directories. If a directory is not empty, but still you want to remove it, okay? In such case, we have to use a command RM hyphen R. R stands for recursive. R stands for recursive, which helps you to remove the files inside the directory and finally the directory will be removed. And I want to remove the directory D2. Recursive means the D2 is having some files. Those files will be removed and finally the directory will also be removed. Okay, so now this will successfully completed the, the file uh, directories has been removed. <clears throat> so in two ways we can remove the directories. One is by using RMDIR, the other one is by using RMIFNR. The difference is remove directory which helps you to remove a directory only when it is empty. But most of the cases directories are not empty when you're working directories will have a number of files. If you want to remove those kind of directories which are having some files, you have to use RMIFNR. Now you are in a position to create directories now not only just creating the directories <clears throat> you can navigate to the previous directory by using cd double dot you are in a position to delete a directory by using rm hyphen r and rm dir so even this you know it the difference between rm dir and rm hyphen r yes now Let's make ourselves very much comfortable with respect to navigation between directories. So what I want to do, I want to create a directory structure like this. I want to create a directory structure like this. What does that mean? This means, look at this, what I want to try to do. I want to create a directory D1. I want to create a directory D1. Inside the D1 directory, I want to create D2. Can I create a directory inside a directory? Yes, why not? We can do that. In Windows, we can create a folder inside one more folder in the same way. You can create a directory inside one more directory. Inside D2, <clears throat> I want to create a directory D3. Inside D3, I want to create a directory D4. This is the hierarchical structure which I want to create. Hierarchical structure, this is what I want to create. I want to create D1, I want to create D2. Inside D2, I want to create D3. Inside D3, I want to create D4. This kind of hierarchical structure of directories I want to create. Can I do that? Yes, why not? Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Let's clear the screen. So right now there are no files. There are no directories. There are some files, F1, F3, F4, but there are no directories. Let's start from the first directory. The first directory is D1. How can you do that? MKDIR, you know it. Directory gets created. Now you have to create second directory inside D1. You need to change to D1. Don't direct write MKDIR D2. So it will be created. You have to create second directory inside the first directory. So first enter into the first directory. CD D1. Yes. Now you are pointing to the now you are pointing inside the first directory. Now in the first directory, MKDIR D2. Yes. Enter into D2. MKDIR D3. Create third directory. Enter into third directory. Inside the third directory, create a fourth directory D4. Yes. No, if you want, you can enter into fourth directory. PWD will show you the current path. Look at the hierarchical structure. Under slash home slash Ubuntu, you have created directory D1. Under directory D1, you have created second directory. Inside the second directory, you have created third directory. Inside the third directory, you have created fourth directory. These are the hierarchical structure. Clear? For D4, the parent is D3. For D3, the parent is two, D2. For D2, the parent is D1. For D1, the parent is Ubuntu. For Ubuntu, the parent is home. Okay, this will be the hierarchical structure in Linux. Now, I from this parent location, right now I'm pointing to D4, you know that. If you write CD double dot, we already have learned this. When you write CD double dot, you go to immediate parent directory. That means you'll point to D3. <coughs> but my plan is I don't want to point to D3. I want to directly jump to slash home slash Ubuntu. Okay, from D4, I want to directly jump to slash home slash Ubuntu. So if you want to go to any location, whichever you want, any path, any directory you want to point out, you can do that by providing the complete directory from complete directory structure, CD slash, you have to start from the top hierarchy slash home, inside home, you have a directory called Ubuntu. So you can directly jump to that particular location. Now PWD, now you are from the D4, you are directly jumping to Ubuntu, got it? So you can navigate 
to any directory you can you can go forward you can go to previous directories you can go to parent directories cd command stands for change directory which helps you to change to any directory whichever you want clear clear about this ls to show you list of all the files you are getting d1 and d why we are, why, we are, why we are not getting d2 because d2 is not inside not but d2 is a second directory which is inside the d1 when you enter into d1 you get the second directory i hope i am very clear my dear friends i hope i am very clear in explaining you not only creating directories removing directories now you are in a position to navigate to any path whichever you want by using change directories clear clear about this yes quick interaction okay yes sajid khan your question sajid you are now allowed to unmute and talk by default you will be in mute you have to unmute and talk <clears throat> no questions jetan b hi sunil welcome jetan yeah your uh, question so, yeah, my question is uh, like i'm not from it background like uh, is this clear whatever we are learning creating files yes, creating clear. directories it's okay clear and you are explaining in a better way thank you like then being i'm saying better ways i have already attended for this training in some other i mean some other coaching mm. okay i did not get anything over there okay so but Hope, this training uh, are amazing okay you, you know aws there. yeah i know aws mm -hmm. very good uh, i have already attended your classes and i'm okay. now attending your classes so okay yeah. So yes, the question, is question. Like, <clears throat> the concept in the uh, concept wise, um, okay, like uh, I'm, I'm understanding everything, mm. but the thing is, uh, uh, like, the first question is like we have two questions. The first question is like we are using a command mode, right? As I'm from non-IT background, this question may be so basic. No, like, it's not a problem. Using the, command why mode. Using the command why mode? are we not using graphical user interface? <laughs> generally when you are communicating to the linux machines jetan okay yeah. this is what machine this is the linux machine which you have created yesterday right Correct. then in the real time whenever you are com communicating to the linux machines mm -hmm. <laughs> because of some security reasons they will not provide you gui access graphical user interface access unlike red hat linux like you will not have a graphical user interface where you can right click and create folders or something like that that will not be provided to you you should be comfortable with working with terminals especially when with respect to linux operating system okay so that's the reason this is right approach of learning hmm? thank you so much and my sec second question is i'm already working with amazon right now very good like, what uh, services you are on no i'm not into it as i said okay, like, okay. i'm working as an account health specialist so okay the seller's accounts okay you're so, talking about amazon uh, shopping site yeah that's correct mm -hmm. okay now if i go with an experience with the experience that i keep for aws for 2 years and if i go and give interviews like will that be good for uh, attending the interview for the mm -hmm. same company amazon or else uh, do i go for another no, company no why are you restricting yourself to amazon you should be open to run work with any company okay create oh, yeah. your profile okay don't with uh -huh. don't don't work it's not specific to one company create your profile uh -huh. okay uh -huh. and take the first opportunity whichever comes okay <clears throat> thank you so much sunil thank, thank you, you and thank you so much for your classes i'm sure i'm sure be focused be focused and perfectly learn whatever we are learning okay yeah. so we will definitely get success stories hmm? yeah definitely sunil i, I will be the one hope i will be the one sure thank you it's not testing your success it should be testing of my success jetan okay <laughs> it's testing of my success there is a one sai How are you, Teresa? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you for finally coming to me. I'm sorry, I had my hand up because I wasn't sure I was going to get a time to speak. Please, at the end, uh, I can you just tell us how to get to the um, to the WhatsApp group? I couldn't get to the WhatsApp group. That's all. I already have posted the WhatsApp group joining link in the chat box. Have you observed? I don't have it, so I'm not sure. Why. Can you see the chat box? I just yes, I can, see, I can see it. I can see it. Mine is empty. I'm sending it to everyone. Can you see a hi message? 
I see high. Yes, I can see the high That's right no. now. Okay. Now, can you see one I link? I can see it. Yes, thank you. Okay. That's Click on that's that link all. and join the group. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you. You're doing a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's move on. Creating files, creating directories, we are enough. Okay. Long list, which is more important. Long list is more important. What does that mean? <clears throat> LS stands for list. We'll provide you a list of files and directories which you have created. Very good. Now, my question is, I want to know more information about the files, not just file names or directory names. I want to get more information about the files. When I say files, it, refer, it is also for directories. Not just file names. I want to more. I want to get more information about the file, like the date and time when the file has been created, owner of the file, who created this particular file, what is the size of the file, what are the permissions of a particular file. This kind of more information you want to get it. When you write ls, you will not get more information. You get a short information about just names. You will not get additional information. You want more information. You want a long information. You want to know about date and time, metadata about the file, date and time when the file has been created, size of the file, what are the permissions of that particular file, when, who created this particular file. This kind of information, you can get it by using long list. LS hyphen L. L stands for long list. So when you use hyphen L option, long listing options, you get same information three plus one total three files and four directories same get you'll get same information three files and one directory total four objects you'll get it yes three files and one directory the same three files and one directory you're getting it but you're getting more information about that particular file coming to file f1 <clears throat> considering the file f1 you are in a position to track the date and time when the file has been created very good 42 refers to size of the file 42 bytes you are in a position to see the size of the file, 42 bytes. That is the size of the file. This is the owner of the file. What is owner? I'll discuss about that later. Try to understand this is the group what the file belongs to. These are the permissions of the particular file. Are you able to see more information? Yes, you are able to do that because of hyphen L option. When you use just list, it will not show you more information. You have to use hyphen L option. Long list will provide you more information. And one quick observation, observe the file F4. Observation, the file F4, what is the size of the file? What is the size of the file? Zero bytes. It's an empty file because you have created the file using touch command. In the beginning, I have said you there are two ways of creating the file by using cat command and touch command. F3 and F4 are the files which are created using touch command. And this is a proof that they are empty files because they are zero bytes. And F1 is a command which I have, F1 is a file I have created using the cat command. It is having some content like welcome to DevOps, good evening, and thank you. That's the reason it is having 42 bytes. And this is a directory. By default, the directory is 4096 bytes. So are you in a position to get more information about the file? Yes, you are in a position by using hyphen L option. L stands for long list. Very good. <clears throat> what if the file name starts with dot? What if the file name starts with dot? Let's experience it. I want to create a file, but my plan, I want to create a file, no doubt. <clears throat> I want to create a file. The name of the file should be, I want to prefix the file. Let's say I want to, one minute. I want to create a file with the name F7. The file name is .f7. What happens when a file name starts with dot? That's what I want to show you. Okay, let's do that. Touch dot .f7. File created, no error, successfully created. ls f1, f2, f3. Are you getting the new file which you have created? Are you able to see the new file which you have created? No. File successfully created, you're not getting any error. File has successfully created, but you are unable to see the file because this is a hidden file. 
in Linux, when a file name starts with dot, it is a hidden file. That's a concept. As it is a hidden file, you are unable to see the file information. LS hyphen L also, you will not get that hidden file information because a hidden file. Similarly, when a directory name starts with dot, I'm creating a directory mkdir. How to create a directory mkdir? I want to create a directory with the name dot d6. No doubt directory gets created, but that will not be visible because it's a hidden directory. In Linux, <clears throat> when a file name starts with dot, it's a hidden file. Similarly, when a, when, a, when a directory name starts with dot, it's a hidden directory. As these are hidden files and hidden directories, your ls command has no ability to show you hidden files and hidden directories. It will show you only normal files and normal directories. When you want to see the hidden files and hidden directories, clear? When you want to see the list of hidden files also, you have to use hyphen A. A stands for all. All means normal files as well as hidden files. Can you see? We have created a hidden file with the name .f7. Are you able to see .f7? Yes. We have created a hidden directory .d6. Are you able to see .d6? Yes. Are you able to see some hidden files and hidden directories? Yes, because you have used the hyphen A option. There's some other hidden files, dot cache. These are some D file, D predefined uh, directories. But are you in a position to see hidden files and hidden directories? Yes, you are in a position to do that because you have used option A. Clear? So we have discussed about three options. Quick recap. <clears throat> the normal list will show you normal file names. LS, LS hyphen L. More information about what is the file, date and time when the file has been created. Uh, the size of the file, the permissions of the file, you're able to see it. LS hyphen A will show you normal files as well as hidden files. Clear? You can use a combination of options. LS hyphen, I use first option L and second option A together. LA. Can you guess what will show you? It will show you more information about the normal files. The date and time of no, date and time when the file has been created, the size of the file of not only normal files, it will also show you the hidden files. You can use a combination of options. Siphon ls siphon la. Observe here, ls siphon la. Long list metadata of normal files. As you have used a, it will show you long list of hidden files also. Dot d7 information date and time and dot f7. Are you getting the date and time? Then the size. <laughs> you can use combination of listing options to get the required information. Listing is very, very frequently used a job. You want to frequently look at the list of all the files and the corresponding hidden files and all those. Now you're in a position to create files, remove files, create directories, remove directories, listing out the files which you have created and listing out, creating hidden mind. You know, if a file does not is visible, that means you have to understand that it's a hidden file. You know, when, when a file name starts with dot, it's a hidden file. When it's similarly, when a directory name starts with dot, it's a hidden directory. How to create a hidden directory? We have seen it when you are when similarly when you write a hidden direct dot, it becomes a hidden directory. Perfect. We have used a combination of LS options also. Next, how to copy a file? Very good, important. This is a file F1. I want to create a copy of this particular file. Okay. Whenever you want to create a copy, we have a command CP stands for copy. As simple as that. You have to mention the source and destination. Source is what file you want to copy. Mention the file name F1. To which file you want to copy? Okay, I want to copy it into a file with the name F100. Do you have this file F100? File is not available. File gets created. The new file F100 gets created and the content will be copied. Are you understanding? File F100 is not available, but still you can run this copy command. You're clearly mentioning copy. CP stands for copy. This is a source and this is the destination. So whatever the content you have, you can see in the file one, the same content will also be visible in F100. The file is not available, file gets created and then the content is copied. Now you can see LS, now you can see F100. Yes, the file created. And if you want to see the information, cat F100, are you getting the same information? Good evening, welcome to DevOps and thank you. The same information which is there in the source, cat. F1, the whatever the information is there in the source, the same information is there in the destination. Are you in a position to create a copy of a particular file? Like in Windows, we write copy paste, right? In the same way. You are in a position to copy the 
content present in the file by using the copy command. By be using the copy command. Clear? Clear about this? Perfect. Tell us. <clears throat> Perfect. Let's move on. Anything more? Yeah, we are done. One more point I want to add. <clears throat> One more point I want to add. How to identify whether it is a file or a directory? Very important question. How to identify whether it is a file? F1 is a file or a directory? It's a file. F4, is it a file or a directory? It's a file. Whereas D1 is not a file, it's a directory. How are you identifying it? By using the color. One way of identification, whether it is a file or a directory, you are able to do it by using color. If the terminal is not supporting colors, everything is shown in black and white. Assume the terminal is not <clears throat> supporting colors. Everything is shown you in black and white. In such case, how to identify which one is a file and which one is a directory, you can do that by using ls l long list. As I mentioned, long list will provide you more information about the files and directories, like the file name, the date and time when the file has been created, the size of that particular file, the owner, the what file that belongs, the permissions. So this kind of information, you can get it by using hyphen L. We already learned that, but something more I want to show you. In this output, in this result, consider the D1. Consider the first character. If the first character is D, <clears throat> it indicates it's a directory. <clears throat> If the first character is D, that means it is a directory. If the first character is hyphen, it means it is a file. So if the terminal is not supporting colors, but still you are in a position to identify whether it is it a file or a directory by using ls hyphen L by looking at the first character. If the first character is D, it's a directory. If the first character is if the first character is hyphen, it's a file. So this is the way, this is the right way of identifying whether it's a file or a directory. Perfect. Clear about this? Yes. Once you're doing hands, once you complete hands on, please disconnect the connection. Especially people who are directly jumping to DevOps without AWS, dis disconnect the connection. Exit to disconnect from the EC2 machine. One more exit to close the terminal. Okay. And then you have to stop the machine. Go to instances. <clears throat> and then right, right now, the machine is in running state. You have to stop the mission so that tomorrow i can again start it and i'll be using the same mission clear clear about this perfect so this is what our agenda and we have meet we have met our agenda every day we'll have an agenda and our agenda will be the highest priority so whatever we are learning you'll know you'll know what are the points which are learned in every day you have a clear schedule so let's move on many participants are waiting for interaction so let's talk with some of the participants <clears throat> Ravi Jampani. Hi, hi Sunil. How are you, Ravi? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. How about you? Doing well. How is today's class? Yeah, it's really very nice. It's pretty simple. Nothing special in today's yes, class. Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, actually, I have an hands on on all these Linux. Okay. okay. You are from the Linux background. No, not from Linux background, but I also know this. You are uh, aware of all these concepts. Yeah, aware of all these yeah. concepts. Tomorrow's, concepts. tomorrow's concepts uh, is very important, my dear friends. So tomorrow we'll discuss about changing the permissions of a file, which is very frequently done, and discussing about the root user and other users. So tomorrow is one something more technical. Yes, sir. Your question. Yeah, my question is how we can open this uh, hidden files um, and uh, we have created a file. You want to read the hidden, opening is nothing but you want to read it, agree? Mm. Let's say your hidden file is having three lines of content. <laughs> you can do it by using cat command. Okay, Ravi? Okay. Though if it's not visible, we can... But still you can command. open the cat command and look at the file. You can also do it using VI editor that also will show you soon, okay? Okay. Ravi? And um, how we can um, enter the empty file? I mean, how we can add the content to the empty file? Using, yeah. Whenever you want to write some content into an empty, empty file, that means you need an editor. Agree, Ravi? Mm. For example, in Windows, what is Notepad? Notepad is an editor where you can write some files, isn't it? Yeah. In the same way, Linux also, we have an editor called VI, Visual Editor. Ah, okay. Using okay. this Visual Editor, you can open the file which you already have created and then you yeah, can yeah, start yeah, yeah, typing right. the data into that particular file. Okay? Right, right. Yeah. Clear, Ravi? Yeah, yeah, clear. Yeah. You're Thanks. from which location? Hyderabad. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
नागराज रीनिंग नागराज yeah i have one doubt uh, that uh, you said uh, we have to remove the uh, directory is it we can remove one by one or uh, using uh, that rmdi uh, some uh, rmdi rm hyphen r uh, yeah one by one we can remove it or uh, multiply we can no, no. one by one we have to remove it okay one command will help you to remove one directory if you want to create remove five directories you have to write five commands nagraj okay. If you want to remove all the five come file directory five directories at once, you have to use script. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Epsay mm -hmm. and King. And King. Get on the line. Epsay and King. Can you hear me? You are now allowed to unmute. <clears throat> Mali Basha, Katike. Uh, hi, sir. How are you, Mali Basha? Fine, good Yes, you're you? doing well. Yes. So question. you know, I have attended you know AWS classes as well. So yes, from yes. day from day one, I'm raising hands. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my yes. god! <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, actually not related to this one, uh, mm. Sunil. So I'm ha I'm a Java developer. Okay. I'm having seven players of uh, IT experience. Totally seven years. Java only. <laughs> yes. Okay. So any actually, specific reason why you're learning AWS and DevOps? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, nowadays we're using for you know DevOps like for all. Uh, is your current uh, you know, organization uh, requesting you to learn all these courses or are you learning by yourself yes 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 it's a organization using s3 actually aws mm -hmm. they're using s3 so yeah that so means your I'll... client is started um, having their infrastructure on cloud mm -hmm. yes okay. and also uh, of course you know right from java developer you need to uh, mm -hmm. uh, continuous integration like uh, jenkins and yes. you know G uh, github a bit bucket that kind of things very good very good. As, uh, regularly we are using we are doing uh, that thing even okay. docker also we have used very good yeah this, actually my so, so this is a technology which everyone should be aware of malibasha i hope you are from developer mm -hmm. but still you are you should know all this isn't it yeah yeah this exactly is unix ml sandal is correct not linux how exactly pipeline once you are developer you are a developer you are uploading the code into github that yes. should move into production automatically agree correct so it's yes. all about defining the pipeline <laughs> so this will be an added advantage for you hmm? yes correct yeah, okay. So that configuration required for all these things. Uh, yes. Of course, the uh, DevOps is uh, yeah. uh, suitable for my, you know, uh, my career. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm having one question, Sunil. Uh, actually, uh, so here, uh, suppose uh, if you have uh, implement one application, like let's say one service, hmm. that could be you know, an image. Okay. That could be. So uh, image. So we can okay. consider that is an image something. Right? Hmm. So in Docker. Okay. So uh, actually. Front end developer also there. Angular said, uh, mm -hmm. I don't have experience, but uh, I know a little mm -hmm. bit all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, they are saying uh, that uh, uh, Angular related any files you can deploy S3. Of course, that is a, a bucket we can deploy that file site. <laughs> yes, so, you're right. Uh, uh, any file you can we... deploy it in S3. Mm, that's not yes. a problem. Mm. Yeah, can't we deploy uh, this image or our you know a war file or anything in um, uh, S3? Easy Yes, three. Yeah, my question. You can do so, that. In S3 supports any file. Okay, it okay. should be in the format of a file. It should have an extension. That's enough. Okay. Okay. Ali Basha, okay. if you have a file, it have an extension. It could be any file. It can do. You can deploy it. Into okay. Deploy in the sense you can save it. You cannot run it. Are you understand? Deployment is not not like deploying it into an application server or something like that. Ali Basha, it cannot be happening. It is only storage service. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have. Yes, correct. I have not experienced on this actually. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I had that uh, easy to. Uh, we can deploy this uh, war file. Ah, yeah, yeah. You can deploy it on war. Okay. Then how we can interrelated from you know S three to. Understand. You'll understand it soon. Okay. 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 This is not the right context. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So actually, this is my question. Actually, so that's you will, a, you will get the answer. Feature. You have to spend some time. Okay. Okay. You have to wait for some time. Okay. One more final call.
Okay. Uh, QChem Tesh. QChem Tesh. Um, good morning. Um, please, I wanted to ask if if we're going to have access to the recordings. Are you in the WhatsApp group? Yes, I just I just joined the WhatsApp group via the link you sent. Uh, you have to pay three for double line so that you get the recordings. Okay. Uh, the 50, 52 US dollars. Okay. Oh, 50, 50 I will US be sending you. I'll be sending you the PayPal link in the WhatsApp group so that you can proceed with the payment. And then you have to send the screenshot to this particular email address so that our team will share you the recordings every day. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. You get so, the updates so, in the WhatsApp group. Right. So it is $50 for the 52. recordings, right? $52. $52 for the recordings. No, not recordings. It's live training and recordings. Okay. Both. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My dear friends, please complete the payment formalities soon. If you have decided, please proceed and complete the payment formalities. Okay, so so that it's very important. Don't make it at the end. Our our backend team uh, will be very comfortable receiving the payments. Don't do it at the end because the meeting link may change. Okay, but definitely tomorrow the meeting link is the same. So thank you all. I hope you have enjoyed the session. What's our plan for tomorrow? Today we have understood the basics of Linux. Tomorrow we're getting into more detailed concepts of Linux. Like the most important concept is. Understanding the file permissions, the Linux files will have three types of permissions, read, write, and execute permissions. You have to understand the permissions. You should be in a position to understand the file permissions. Not only just understanding the file permissions, you should be in a position to change the file permissions in both the notations, numerical notation and the alphabetical notation. That's very, very important. So tomorrow's concept is understanding and changing the file permissions and how to use pseudo keyword. So difference between root user and the normal user much more technical details of Linux for tomorrow's session. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed the session. See you tomorrow with the same meeting link. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. Bye, everybody.